the next block is about me. And if you read the rest of our documentation, we, we use this block as, as an example. So that means we know already how to implement everything and this will be faster. Um, first, I need, let's do a small tweak here. It would be nice if all of this tree would be of the same height. So to do that, we will select the, the divs in, in the columns. And because this is flex, the columns in the row are already the uh, same, same height. So now we just have to go here to bootstrap and we find the height and we will say 100%. Yeah, and that's, that's it. Okay, now let's do the block in WordPress panel, add the block action to the section. This will be about me. And it will go into custom section, page sections. And no need to register the category now because we, we already uh, registered it on, the, on this block. Okay. And now let's make the fields editable. First is this a small like heading. Let's call it top heading. Content. And then this is the title. And we can use the same IDs from one block to another. It's only important that the I attribute ID is unique within a single block. And let's make the description editable. And again, we can make a rich text so that we can format stuff. And then the image. We leave the image size empty so that we can control it in the, in the block when, when we are editing the block. Okay, and then the button. We want to make both the label and the link editable. So the first attribute will be button link. It will be used as a link. Let's close this. And then we click add attribute. And the second one will be button label. And it will be used as content okay let's save and saving also exports the the current file and all the blocks that are there so we can go straight to wordpress and reload the page and go here Oh, and our blog didn't show up. See, I was too smart. So, saving the page will usually do a quick export. But operations like defining a new block, to, to, for them to take effect, we have to do export the team. Otherwise, all the required uh, code doesn't get added to the project. So now here it is about me and we can again start editing
I won't spend too much time changing the content here. Uh, otherwise it will be very boring. So let's select the picture. Maybe a different one. And if wool is too large, we, we have the option to change the size. Okay, and then we can choose the link for the button. We can search for posts or pages or other content types or just enter a URL. So, okay, we did that. Now let's update. But we still need to take care of the, of these uh, skills or counter. So let's go back to PineGraw. And if you remember uh, from our documentation, Blocks can have inner area that can contain other sub-blocks. So we will select the element, in our case this is a row, which contains the sub-elements. And we will say this row is our block inner content area. But we don't want it to contain just any kind of block because this will be very messy if people add paragraphs and tie headings and images here. So we say, okay, it should only contain counter blocks. And what are counter blocks? Well, we don't have them yet. And we will define them now. So we will select the first column and we will say block and set the ID counter. Counter, again category will be page sections. And let's make it editable. So let's select the, the, the number, block attribute, number, and uh, label, 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 okay. And we have to export the whole thing because we added a new block type. So let's see. So again, we have to recover the block because the structure changed. Okay, now you, you, we notice that we have three of these counters. They're kind of pre-filled because we had three of them in our source project. So that's how the template is generated, like default value for the inner blocks uh, section. And now we can um, simply edit them. And we can also add more of them. Let's add two more. And I, I won't change the content, it will be boring. And we notice that the styling, it's a bit different. Like usually in our source project, everything is neatly aligned, like on the left side. And here the, the these two are kind of um, spaced between. Um, and we can get these kind of differences in styling because our, like the styling we included 
in the editor, the bootstrap styling can, can clash with WordPress styling, like the, the WordPress dashboard styling. So in some cases we might get situations like this. But it's not a big problem, you know, if we update and view the page. On the page itself, everything looks like it should. It's only during the editing we can get uh, slight differences, um, but that's all. So yeah, the second section about me is finished. And Let's do the next one in the next part.